So last week, the drone was taken out over the CBH terminal in Quinana. This place is massive, you've got the silos, the loading docks, and the port all laid out in one shot. Flying over really gives you a sense of the scale before we get in closer, so this first bit is just to set the scene and put the rest of the video into perspective before we see the curve. So this week we're set up about 22 and a half kilometers out from the CBH silos, right here at the North Fremantle port, on a small elevated jetty. We've brought along the DJI Mini SE drone, a GoPro 11, and the Nikon P900 to capture some fresh shots of Fremantle and the port. The idea is to put together a nice little promotional video of the area, showing off the coastline, the harbour, and all the action around here. Kicking things off, you'll spot the Roto Ferry heading out for the day, a typical sight around North Fremantle, especially once summer rolls in. Just behind it, another passenger boat makes its way out too, taking advantage of the calm waters and the especially nice weather we've been getting as winter comes to an end. From there, we get a spectacular up-close flyover of the Maritime Museum, showing off its unique architecture right on the edge of the harbour. Then the flight carries us out over the South Mole Lighthouse, giving a perfect look back across the water, and if you look closely to the left of the screen, you can even see the CBH terminal sitting on the horizon. It was this sighting that prompted the use of the P900 to zoom in on it and get another look at it from a different angle and perspective. And here's our photographer, Terry from Bloke Off Track, standing on the jetty with this picture snapped from below by the drone. You can see the P900 set up on the tripod, with the lens sitting about 6 meters above sea level on this calm, glassy day. Couldn't ask for better conditions to frame up the CBH terminal in all its glory. With this camera and a bit of elevation, should be no dramas pulling off the shot, right? Well, this is a little bit awkward, we had everything set up for the perfect shot, gear lined up, conditions spot on, thought it was going to be smooth sailing. But as you'll see, things didn't exactly play out that way. Still, that's half the fun, sometimes the best footage comes when the unexpected sneaks in. So, let's flick it over to video mode. Maybe photo mode's not quite doing its job on this camera today. At this distance and with this elevation, the P900 should have no dramas showing 100% of the structure, and even a bit of the beach in the frame too. Okay, I'm starting to sense a bit of a theme here. On the flat earth model, this really shouldn't be happening. Switching over to video mode has changed absolutely nothing, the view's exactly the same. Let's look at what we know so far and explore the outcomes of final experiment conducted last year in Antarctica. In December 2024, a journey to Antarctica set out to put one of the most persistent debates to the ultimate test. Called the final experiment, it brought together both flat earth believers and globe earth supporters, all determined to witness firsthand what really happens under the midnight sun. Over the course of four days at Union Glacier Camp in West Antarctica, participants live streamed their experience to the world, fielded questions in real time, and conducted experiments designed to challenge their own beliefs. For the entire four days, the sun was continuously visible, circling the sky even at midnight. Streamed live across the globe, the final experiment provided undeniable evidence of the Antarctic midnight sun, a contradiction to flat earth models. While the flat earthers started to fragment and even turn on each other after this experiment, plenty still cling desperately to the theory as if it's their reality, no matter how much evidence stacks up against it. We've shown you the curve time and time again. Now it's your turn, show us the edge.